oh, I'm sorry, I'm not quite ready for you tonight yet. And I will be in just about 10 minutes. And I know so many of you are already getting ready for the program to begin. And while you're doing that, I encourage you to go on and bid on some of our awesome auction items that we have right now. And you can do that throughout the whole program that's open until 9 p.m. tonight. But before we start and before I finish getting ready for you, I want you to meet Trisha, a volunteer for my health. My name is Trisha. I am a volunteer at My Health and I worked with YAV and now I'm on Junior Board. I have really loved helping other people my age and just really working with a lot of people my age who think the same way that I think. I've had a lot of open conversations and just really good discussions about what mental health means to young people and also just what we need in the healthcare system has been really interesting to, to see. I think my favorite thing about my health is the relationships that I've made there. They're some of my best friends that I've met there and some really good talks and relationships that I've formed. And I'm really grateful for the experience. My health is important to our community because they offer a voice to a group of people that is often not heard. And I think especially for something that's as important as our mental health or just our health in general, it's been really nice for me to see how so many voices are being heard in one specific place that offers a safe community. I think 2020 has impacted the mental health of young people in general. Um, just because we weren't able to see our friends, we're not really able to communicate in person and have that face-to-face -face experience. And I also think it was really tough to leave school early, especially for people who maybe this is their last year of high school or last year of middle school. Um, it was just really tough to say bye to all of your teachers and friends. <laughs> so my health is important to me because it gives me a safe place to talk about whatever I'm going through. And there's people there that I know truly care about me and will help me through whatever I'm experiencing. I think that the mental health resources are really important, especially the ones on their social media because it's really easily accessible. And for people who might not feel comfortable coming into a clinic and seeing other people, it's a really viable option to try it at home, just simple like tapping gestures or um, activities that can relieve your stress.
Hmm, I have no idea what to wear to this year's mirror ball. I mean, if it were live, I would be on my phone picking out a fabulous dress from Rent the Runway, but it's a virtual event. And so will anyone even notice if I'm just wearing a fancy top and sweatpants? I don't know, I wish I had somebody I could ask about things like this and all my other life-defining decisions. You know, someone who I could trust and someone who wouldn't judge me. Wait a minute. Mirror, mirror on the wall. What should I wear to the mirror ball? Oh my goodness, Ken Barlow. Oh, hey, Sarah you're, Jean. You're my fashion fairy godfather. You're right as rain. So, here's the deal. You're having a little doubt about what to wear in as if you were going out. Yes, I really am. Well, I spoke at the event last year, and trust me, you want to dress to eclipse all the expectations. So here's my fashion forecast for you. Tonight, you'll be facing low atmospheric pressure, but with relative humility huh? and the right outfit, there's a 90% chance of dazzle. If there's a staircase and you need to climb it, I recommend shoes that are Fahrenheit, but not too tall. All in all, I think tonight's going to be a breeze. And thanks to your lightning quick mind, you'll be greeted by thunderous applause. Oh, thank you so much, Fashion Fairy Godfather. You are so welcome, Sarah Jean. I'm so glad I could precipitate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, it's time. There's no place like the ball. There's no place like the ball. There's no place like the ball. Good evening, everyone. I'm Sarah Jean Knox, and welcome to the eighth annual My Health Mirror Ball virtual style, our theme this year is storybook beginnings because although my health can't promise teens and young adults that life will have a happily ever after storybook ending, thanks to the incredible my health staff and services, we can offer them a storybook beginning to adulthood where they are welcomed and respected and valued and where they are provided information and support which empowers them to make responsible and well-informed decisions. Tonight, we're gonna focus on the comprehensive services that My Health provides, the incredible people who personally provide those services, and check in with some of the teens and young adults who will share firsthand their relationship and experiences with My Health. Throughout the evening, you'll have a chance to bid on some truly storybook auction items, and. Also make your donations to My Health to continue to provide the remarkable services that our teens and young adults so desperately need and deserve. And to honor those unbelievably scrumptious cakes that have been a sweet part of the My Health mirror ball tradition, we're gonna take time to have a little fun in a fast moving game of That Takes the Cake, where we find out how much two young adults know about, well, being young adults. And here's the frosting. Each contestant will be playing for one of our virtual viewers. Yes, one of you. And if you're lucky, they might be taking the cake as well. More on that later. First, to get the mirror ball spinning, I am honored to introduce Executive Director of My Health, Gerilyn Hasbeck. Good evening, and welcome to the 2020 My Health Mirror Ball. Things look a little different, don't they? I'm all alone at the Metropolitan on a night when I had hoped to be seeing you in person. Please know how much we appreciate all of you who are with us tonight virtually and hope that we will be able to see you in person next year. Tonight we are raising money to support our mental health programs. Young people now more than ever need help coping with stress, anxiety, depression, and the ever-changing world in which they live. I know that I personally have struggled understanding and trying to resolve the inequities I see around me. Imagine how much harder that is for a young person. Their whole lives have changed. How they learn, how they play, how they socialize in the community, and how they interact with their family. It's been turned upside down. And I can tell you from personal experience, my 2020 high school graduate did not have the experience they had hoped for at the beginning of the school year. Now I have two young adults going to college through mostly online courses. 
This is just not how they or we envisioned their future. I wanted to take a minute to share what my health has been up to for the last year. The good news, we've stayed open during all of COVID-19 turmoil, and we continue to serve the youth in our community who need it most. Some of our delivery methods have changed, but our mission and our focus remain the same. In clinic, we are seeing youth ages 12 to 26 for general medical and reproductive health care, as always. As an essential community health provider, the governor mandated that we remain open even after many businesses closed for in-person services in March. While we saw far fewer clients through April, clinic visits were back to their usual numbers by late spring. And in May, we implemented an online appointment scheduling system. We found that our clients often seek information and want to book appointments during off hours into the evening when our clinic is closed. Our young clients already encounter many barriers to receiving health care, and we didn't want making an appointment to be yet another barrier. I'm happy to report that we've seen many new clients and a decrease in no-show rates since implementing online appointments. I'm also pretty sure we're the only teen clinic in the area that has this feature. We are currently providing in-person telehealth and telephone care to young people. Our clinic is following all CDC and Minnesota Department of Health guidelines. We continue to be a safe space for all of our clients. In early 2020, we were fortunate to hire a second mental health therapist. This therapist started in late March and since then has been providing telehealth services. In fact, both our therapists are primarily providing telehealth counseling sessions at this point. Although we are available for in-person sessions, most of our clients are comfortable receiving therapy through virtual methods. My health counselors work 32 hours a week and counseling is available all days we are open, including Saturdays. We are currently providing more than 100 sessions each month in clinic and providing individual and group therapy at Hope House in Chanhassen. For those of you who don't know, Hope House is a safe space for young people ages 14 to 19 who are experiencing homelessness in the western suburbs. We've seen an increase in demand for our counseling services, but we have limited capacity. In 2021, we plan to hire yet another therapist. Your donations tonight will directly assist us in making this happen. My health education team has been most impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. When schools closed down in March, my health education team quickly adapted to Zoom, as have we all, and began providing both live and pre-taped educational outreach for our community partners. During the summer months, the health educators created new curriculum, videotaped sessions, and worked on expanding the ways in which we can reach young people. Currently, the team is focused on providing relief and resources to parents who are now homeschooling or overseeing their kids' distance learning experience. They have developed a puberty workbook for families, which will be available for purchase online in the coming weeks. And the new mental health curriculum, developing social emotional skills in elementary and middle school aged kids is being launched with area schools and some new partners. Our goal is to continue to be a resource for educators and especially parents during this time. My health educators see nearly 15,000 people each year through outreach efforts. I suspect this year's numbers will look dramatically different, but we know that young people still need the information, the support, and the resources that we have to offer. We are thankful and grateful for your continued support of My Health. Thank you to our sponsors, many of whom have continued to provide support year after year. For those of you who are monthly sustainer donors, thank you. Your monthly donations total nearly $12,000 annually. And if you're not a monthly sustainer donor, please consider making your contribution recurring through our website. To those of you who are hosting watch parties tonight, and to those of you who are simply logged in and watching from the comfort of your own home, we thank you for your support. I've said this many, many times before, but all of you are the best advocates for my health. You are the ones who tell your friends, your family members, and your coworkers about the amazing work that our team does in the community. You are our best voices for referrals, and you help make the connections to young people who need our services. You are the ones who keep making donations to ensure my health is around for many years to come. Tonight's event is hopefully the first and the last virtual gala we will do. Our silent auction will remain open for at least 30 minutes after the end of this program. Even if you don't win a silent auction item, please consider making a general donation to support our programs. 
After all, we actually saved you some money tonight. No need to get gussied up, purchase some cocktails, and possibly spend two hours seated next to folks who you may not know and now you need to make small chat with. The cost of this event for you? Nothing. We need you to support. We need your support now more than ever. Young people in our community need help. The staff at My Health are experts in adolescent young adult health care. Our programs serve nearly 20,000 young people, parents, educators, and community partners each year. Help us continue to do the work that we do for many, many years. Your donation of any amount will truly make a difference in the lives of our clients. I certainly hope to see you in person next year, but in the meantime, thank you. Thank you for your continued support. Thank you, Geraldyn. And you know, for an organization that is all about sharing vitally important information, you think someone would have told Geraldyn uh, that the live event at the Metropolitan is no longer going on. So at least on the bright side, parking wasn't an issue for her. Joining us now to share a few thoughts about working with and engaging with My Health, please welcome Dominique, the Hopkins School Community Engagement Manager. Greetings, everyone. My name is Dominique Pierre Toussaint. I am the Hopkins School's Community Engagement Manager. My Health has created an incredible relationship with the Hopkins School's Community Engagement and Education Department. I believe the reason why My Health is critical in our community is due to that they provide resources that are in the fields of mental health and physical health, which is what we are stressing to take care of with our youth at this moment. My health is my go-to for those type of resources. Right now, the youth that I've been interacted with have um, suffered some anxiety, some depression. I come to realize having youth in my home that are within the elementary, junior high, and high school, that I feel that students need to get out the house at least two hours a day. Doesn't necessarily mean that they have to do two hours worth of anything, but at least be out of the home for these two hours to regroup. The benefit of getting out from what I've noticed with, the, with my, my own kids uh, was it just getting out of a space that they feel boxed in. And once you are boxed in, that actually takes the creativity out of you. Um, actually, anxiety builds in. I mean, it would go to sort of a sense of being locked up. So far, I've noticed that um, their will is a little stronger than what everyone else thinks. Um, they're excited to get back, not to the norm, but just get back to something where they're visual, they're, they're, they have visual aid or more contact, not physically touching, but just within contact with their own peers. The first step is you and I, it is us. So it takes, it takes a village right now. We need you to be a part of this village. And please, let's go with the resources that we have in the community like My Health. Thank you so much, Dominic, for sharing your thoughts and your insights on the youth in our community and your youth at home, of course. As a parent, you know what it's like, and maybe you watching at home know it's, what it's like. Maybe you have teens or you've had teens in the past, and you understand what they're going through. Maybe you've been a teen yourself. My guess is that you have been. And you know how hard this time specifically during the pandemic can be on the mental health of a young person. We see how it is on adults and it's just magnified on young people in our community. And we do need to stand together as a village and come together for the youth in our community and partner them with amazing resources like My Health. And that's what we are here to do right now. We're here to support the mental health programs at My Health. And you can do that right now by making a donation. Go to myhealth.cbo.io or simply text My Health to 56651. By texting that or going straight to myhealth.cbo.io, you are going to be actively participating and partnering with My Health. 
reaching the students where they are to give them a listening ear. Maybe you can't be the listening ear, but through the programs at My Health, you can provide that to them. Give them an outlet. Give them someone that they can trust and you know they can trust to talk to and work through all of the big emotions right now. We all have big emotions and the youth within our community are no different. So go together and let's be their village. Let's stand with them. Let's listen to them. And we can do that through our partnership with My Health. I know how much community means to you because many of you are at watch parties right now. Many of you are at uh, the 11 watch parties going on. Give yourselves a round of applause on your couch at home. Yep, you're doing it, good job. Uh, it is so fun to know that you're gathering together to celebrate this event as you maybe would at a table to get, that's my table by the way, <laughs> me pretending to be a table, as you would at a table at the in-person event. I know my health staff drop, dropped off the uh, watch party bags yesterday and you have gotten to open those and use those for this party. And let's take a look at some of our watch parties right now. Thanks to those of you who have already sent us photos. You look like you're having so much fun. Your food looks delicious. Look at that charcuterie board. That is fancy. Oh my goodness. You guys are all getting together, and I love this because you hold each other accountable. You're bringing each other in on the giving, and you're stepping together and saying, hey, we're a community, and let's stand up for the youth in our community. And so if you're at a watch party right now, nudge the person next to you. Say, hey, let's all take out our phones right now and partner with My Health. That's what you can do right now. If you're not at a watch party, just imagine someone is next to you nudging you, and go ahead and pull out the phone, and let's do this together. As a teen or a young adult, finding someone to talk to about personal matters is someone you know that you really connect with. And trust without fear of judgment is difficult in regular times. We all know that, we've all been there. But to find one during the pandemic when face-to-face, heart-to-heart meetings are replaced with screen-to-screen -screen meetings, this can be so challenging to say the least. But Fortunately for my health teens and young adults, Carly is only a Zoom call away. My name is Carly Gershon. I am the program manager for the mental health program at My Health. At My Health, we offer several different mental health services. One is individual counseling, one is family counseling, we do a little group counseling. And right now we're seeing pretty much 100% of our clients via um, telehealth. Virtual care has been, I think we've actually been kind of surprised at how well it's worked. It works pretty much exactly like FaceTime. We use a program that's secure and HIPAA compliant, of course, and so people can just check into like a virtual waiting room and then I go pick them up from the waiting room and then um, we have our session almost face to face. That's what it feels like. My health is and I'm not just saying this, such an awesome organization in so many different ways. And one of those ways is that we are small. So we're able to quickly pivot to um, doing something like telehealth when we have been doing face-to-face -face sessions for so long um, because we can move faster than some of the larger agencies. In many ways, our, our admin support has a more personal connection with our clients as well. So it's easier to explain and easier to um, move toward a different system. So because of COVID-19, we have noticed an increase in uh, like some anxiety for some of our clients, but it's amplified. Working with this age group is incredible because not only are there so many different things going on in a person's life between ages 12 to 26, but also there's so much going on in the brain during that time of development. And it has just been such an honor to be able to talk with these folks during this like pivotal time in their lives and uh, to be able to help them make changes that are really gonna last a lifetime. My Health does truly incredible work. We try to serve everybody we can. We really try so hard not to turn anybody away. We don't want anybody to have a lack of care. 
especially mental health care, because of inability to pay or other circumstances. Um, and I feel like we have so much heart that a lot of other agencies maybe don't necessarily have, again, because of our size and because of the population we serve too. I end up telling young people a lot lately that we're all in this together and everybody to an extent is having a tough time. And I just want everybody to know, especially our clients who are members of the LGBTQ community or who are um, black, indigenous, people of color, uh, that we're here for them during this really tough time. play That Takes the Cake, the game show where two young contestants try to answer questions that can truly affect their lives. Now, let's meet today's contestants. We have Zach and Kafia. Welcome, Zach. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Zach. I'm from Eden Prairie, and I write music. Zach from Eden Prairie. We have a musician on the stage here tonight. And Kafia, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, my name is Kafia, and um, I'm from Naples. Welcome, it's so great to have you here with us in the studio to play this game. Now, I will be asking you a series of questions and when you think you know the answer, ring your bell as quickly as you can. If you ring first, you get the first opportunity at a point. But if you answer your question wrong, your opponent will get the opportunity to steal that point from you. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game is our winner and will be taking home this cake. Now, each of you is also playing for one of our My Health virtual guests tonight. So we drew two names from the list of registered guests. And let me tell you who you're playing for. Zach is playing for Jan from Minnetonka. Hello, Jan. And Kafia is playing for Jason from Shaska. Welcome, Jason. Good luck to both of you tonight because you are in it to win it as well. All right, here we go. Question number one, what? do all of the following places provide for a teen or young adult? A bedside table, an Eltoids tin, a medicine cabinet, the inside of a Kleenex box, and under the bed, but not under the mattress. Uh, a place to store your coins. Store your coins. That is something that you could store, but not the correct answer. Kafia, do you have an answer? Yes, uh, a place to store uh, condoms. That is correct. These are all fantastic places to store your condoms. All right, question number two. Which of the following people might not be considered a trusted adult? A parent, a teacher, a counselor, a coach, or a guy on Facebook without a profile? Yes, Kafia. A guy on Facebook without a profile? That is correct. He is not trustworthy. Yes, Zach. What about a guy on Instagram without a profile? Also not safe. Do not trust people you do not know from the internet. Just general rule, don't. Please, don't do it, either of you, or any of you at home, don't do it. Okay, question number three, just as a reminder, Kafia is ahead by two points. Zach, you need to ring that bell a little quicker. You've got this? Okay, question number three. Name two of the five most common STIs for young people. Um, chlamydia and gonorrhea? That is correct. Those are two of the five. Katya, would you like to answer any of the other ones? Yeah, um, I'm gonna go with HPV okay. and herpes. That is correct. And the fifth one is also HIV AIDS. You guys know this. Uh, that makes me so happy. It makes me happy for your safety and your health. Let's go on to the next question. Question number four, which of the following is not, I repeat, not a service provided by my health? Pregnancy tests, birth control, STI tests, hearing tests, annual physicals, or counseling? Yes, Zach. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. You couldn't hear me? No, like that's the, I'm just Josh, and that's the oh, answer, hearing tests, yeah. That is correct, hearing tests. My health does not provide hearing tests. However, they do provide pregnancy tests, birth control, STI tests, annual physicals, and counseling. All of you at home watching right now, 
That is what you are supporting tonight. And we have another point here for Zach and again for Janet. Congratulations on that one. Our next question. Which of the following is not a top quarantine trend? Puzzles, fostering pets, hanging out at a busy airport. That one was too close to call. Still too close. All right, Kathy, I think I'm gonna have to give it to her this time. Which is the least popular trend? I would say hanging out at a busy airport. That is correct. <laughs> hanging out at a busy airport is not a popular trend these days. Definitely not as popular as practicing your TikTok dances. <laughs> I didn't practice. I have not been. Just ignore it. <laughs> Question number six. Loyalty, honesty, sense of humor, likes my friends, and likes me just the way I am are all top qualities in what? Yes, Zach. I have those top qualities. Oh, I believe you. However, Zach, you are not the answer to this question. Close. I am going to have to bring it over here to Kafia. Let me give you some options here. A dog, a twin sister, a partner in a law firm, and a partner in life. I'm going to go with a partner in life. That is correct. Do you want, yes, Zach. What, what if I was your partner in life, you know? Then that would be you. All right, I'm gonna give you both a point for that because you are great humans, honest, loyal, funny. You like your friends and you like people the way they are. You get that and you get that as well. Congratulations to you both. And on to our seventh question. Which of the following, again, this is multiple choice, is not one of the most requested my health presentations. Stress management, healthy relationships, safer sex, STIs, making out with a sock puppet, and sexual decision making. Zach. Sock puppet. That is correct. Nobody requests for their presentation on making out with a sock puppet. We are currently at four to four, which means we are jumping into our tiebreaker question. This is going to be true or false. In 2019, at My Health, more than 1,000 clients were seen in 3,100 clinic visits. Kafia. I'm going to, uh, I know that sounds like a really big number, but I think I'm going to go with true. That is correct. It is true. My Health has seen more than 1,000 clients within 3,100 clinic visits in 2019 alone. That is because of all of you watching at home. Let's give Katya a round of applause right now. Congratulations, and congratulations, Jason. You are our virtual winner. And Zach, thank you so much for playing. This has been so much fun. This is That Takes the Cake. And thank you to all of you who are continuing to give and partner with My Health. I'm seeing donations come through right now. Sue, Kathleen, James, Lisa, the list has already gone up because you're moving so fast here. But I want to let you know that we cannot thank you enough. Your generosity and your support are what make My Health possible and what allows us to connect with the youth in our community. And I also want to thank our amazing sponsors tonight because we couldn't do it without them. Our executive sponsor, Alina Health, thank you so much. Our signature sponsors, North Memorial Health, Comcast Business, and UCARE. Those of you uh, who are at the watch parties, our VIP watch party sponsors was The Vine Room tonight. And our supporting sponsors were Community Blueprint, Stage Time Productions and AV for You. And I'm getting a little flash in the corner of my eye, letting us know that we just received a $15,000 gift. Let's give them a round of applause. It's just me right here on stage because we're social distancing, so I'm gonna clap. But if you're at home, go ahead, give a round of applause. That is absolutely amazing. That makes this work that my health is doing work just so much better. We are able to really connect with more youth in our community. And there's so many ways to support. There's, uh, you can give directly by giving on your phone or a recurring payment through the website. 
or you can bid on the silent auction, which is open until 9 p.m. this evening. And it, it will, it closes in just a couple hours. And we have so many good items. And I know many of you know that you're already bidding on them because I'm seeing those numbers go up in on my sheet that they have in front of me right here. And But I would love to just take a moment to tell you about our five premier auction items. So first, we have our handsome custom bike in a gift box, which is made locally here in Minneapolis by Handsome Cycles. And what is so great about this is that you get to choose the frame, the size, the color. They are letting us know that there are over 426 color options. So I guess that would be about 427 color options for you. And this darling handlebar one-speed bicycle will be perfect for cruising around town, which I think you know because this one's being bid on pretty competitively. We're at $1,150 on that one right now, and I anticipate that's gonna keep going up through the night. Next, you absolutely have to go bid on our guided fly fishing day for two in southeastern Minnesota or western Wisconsin with the super fly fisherman, Steve Carlton. Steve will show you how and where to fish for wild brook trout and native brown trout, which you might know what those are, and give you some pro tips on casting and fly selection. So you're basically going to be a pro at the end of this. And lunch and equipment and transportation are included. This is at $450 right now. Keep bidding that up. And while you're doing that, I've got something for you winos at home. So you know where you are. You're probably drinking wine right now, okay? So we have a private wine tasting for eight donated by the Vine Room, our VIP watch room sponsor. And you will get to try wines from their Golden Coast flight, which will be served along with delicious cheese and nuts and charcuterie. And we all know that there is nothing better than gathering with a group of friends and some delicious wine. So go bid on that one. That is currently at $450 as well. Bid that up tonight. And for those of you who like connecting with people, we know that small dinner parties are on the rise, as you know, as we are still just craving community, but in a safe setting. So if that's you, you are going to love this dinner for four in your home with Chef Colin, who you might know him from The Wandering Kitchen over at Keg and Case in St. Paul. He is going to provide you and your guests an appetizer, dinner, and a dessert that you're absolutely going to love. This is at $3.50 right now. Get your best friends together and bid this up nice and high. You are going to love this one. And finally, for those of you who like to take things to the limits, we have a hot air balloon ride for two of you. It will take off at Amit Apple Farm and St. Croix Vineyards in Stillwater. And this hour long ride will be served with a side of champagne or sparkling cider. And, but we all know what you're gonna end up choosing because you're gonna be wanting that at the end of your ride. Um, but here's the deal with that one. This one, we only have four of these and they are $700 tonight. And the best thing about that is that that $700 goes straight to my health. That is what you're doing with that donation, with that awesome purchase. So go ahead and buy those. We have, uh, well, actually now we only have three of them. <laughs> so bid on those. Those will be available until 9 p.m. tonight. So don't uh, even think about going to bed. I want you to be party on and just bid a lot. And you know, a good party makes me think of good music because music is known as the universal language there for everyone to enjoy and relish. But for our next guest, sometimes a song can feel so personal. It's as if it were written specifically for her. And it becomes her safe space, much like my health is a safe space for so many teens and young adults. Mirror, mirror on the wall, please help us envision Lydia Liza, a talented young musician. Hi. Uh, my name is Lydia Liza. I've been a musician since I was around 16. Um, I am going to play a song for you today called Everywhere I Go. It's a song by Lissy, which has really just been an anthem for me throughout my life um, as I try to find my place in the world, which can feel impossible sometimes. My favorite thing about songs is that they can feel like they were written for you. And this is one of those songs I was like, how did she know 
I felt like this. And I'll fall on my knees. Tell me how it's the way to be. Tell me how it's the way to go. Tell me all that I should know. I really admire what my health does. I think it's really important for everyone to have a safe place and a safe space to ask questions that they're nervous to ask, to navigate this life. Um, I've been the kid standing in front of a clinic wondering whether or not to go in. And the worst thing that ever happens is you walk out with more to think about. And that is never a bad thing. It's never a bad thing. And the worst that could happen is you'll get some answers. And I'll fall on my knees Tell me how it's the way to go Tell me how it's the way to be To evoke some empathy I feel like it's very important to donate to these kind of clinics because it's imperative for teenagers especially to have that space to navigate life, to um, to ask the questions, to nurture curiosity about themselves, to get consent education, to, uh, to learn how other people think and are. Um, yeah, I really admire what my health does, and I think it's very, very important. And follow me now everywhere I go. Angels will call on me and take me to my home. Lydia, thank you so much. Wow, I love your voice. Thank you for sharing that song and some of your story with us as well. It is such a wonderful way to bring our evening here to a close. I want to thank all of you who are at home for being here and for your incredibly generous donations that support my health as they continue to provide vitally important services every single day to teens and young adults. But before we close out the evening, there are some folks I know who would like to share their thoughts about you, our steadfast supporters. Thank you so much for supporting my health and allowing us to continue providing services to young people in our community. The donations that people give to my health make our work possible. Thank you so much for supporting the work that we do and allowing us to support the youth of this community. Thank you so much for all you do. We literally could not do this without you. You are changing and saving lives every day in our community. From the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for all you do. Your contributions change lives daily. We couldn't do what we do today without your help and support. Thank you. Thank you for supporting the young people in our community. We really appreciate it. On behalf of everyone at My Health, we thank you so much for your generosity. Thanks for all you do. <laughs> well, looks like my work here is done. Whoa. Hey, Ken. Hey, so how did it go? Oh, it went great. Everyone was just wonderful. As were you. And you know what? You didn't just rent the runway, you owned it. Oh, you are too kind. And, well, speaking of kind, did you do this? It's the least I could do because everyone deserves a sweet treat now and then, and it's actually sugar-free. So, to your health. Better yet, to, to my, my health. my health. Oh, that got all over me. Uh, oh, good, Ken. It's not sugar-free. <laughs>